بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق أجمعين محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم We are still in the subjects of Ma'ad and the subject uh, tonight inshallah will be about the grave pressure an effect of our deeds in Barzakh. The pressure and compression of the deceased in the grave is mentioned in many traditions. And it is said that this is one of the things that everybody will uh, taste and everybody will feel. Uh, when the body is put in the grave, uh, then the grave will pressurize him severely and it depends on his deeds, good deed or bad deed, then that severity will be uh, little or more. But in general, there is, uh, um, in a way or another, uh, some pressure in the grave. <clears throat> Those who have uh, good deeds, they are a mu'min, they are a believer, uh, their deeds are good, their wilayah to Ahlul Bayt is good, it will be very light, very slow. They will not feel it much. Um, and some very high uh, position of faith, they may not feel it at all. But those who have bad deeds, their pressure will be so much that according to some of traditions, will uh, break his bones and ribs together. And then again, after the pressure, his body will be uh, formed and returned to normal for uh, other questionings and other uh, sequences in the grave. Uh, so that is uh, mentioned in many, many ahadith. It looks there is no way to avoid it except by certain uh, good deeds. Why that happened? Uh, in ahadith, many points are mentioned about it. One of them is um, losing the uh, blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without using it in a good cause. You know, Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with health, with wealth, with ability, with power, and we can do a lot of good deeds, a lot of good things, but we are not using that in very good uh, manner. So uh, that loss will, be, um, will have the effect uh, of this pressure in the grave. In hadith, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, ضَغْطَةُ الْقَبْرِ لِلْمُؤْمِنْ كَفَّارَةٌ لِمَا كَانَ مِنْهُ مِنْ تَضْغِيعِ النِّعَمِ Compression of the grave for the believer. Now he's talking about the mu'min, the believer. Still there is compression. Say so for what? He, could, he said it is, a, it is an expiation for the loss of blessings from it. So expiation, kafara for the loss of the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which was given to him. Uh, so we have to uh, uh, question ourselves uh, every day and see what blessings of Allah are given to us and what is our duty about these blessings. It's not that only a favor and we have to forget about it. No, there are responsibilities for that. If we have uh, we got uh, good uh, income today, then we have to think about paying our religious dues obligatory, like homes and zakat, and also the recommended one to help the poor, the needy, others. So we are using these blessings of Allah in a good cause. If we have a, a health and we can help somebody, then we have to go and help him, support him, that will help us too. Um, get rid of the pressure of the grave and so on you know the second point is mentioned is um, when we um, urinate and uh, without taking care that it should not uh, spoil our body um, you know after um, urination we have to wash ourselves and if it is splash then we have to be careful if it is splash on our legs or other parts of the body, we have to wash it with water uh, to make it tahir, to make it uh, clean. Uh, so if somebody do not care for that, one of the bad effects of it in the grave is 
the pressure of the grave. The third thing, سوء الخلق مع الأهل and that is to have bad manners, bad ethics with the wife. Uh, if somebody is um, not treating his wife well, is always uh, angry, fighting, shouting, and uh, do not uh, be polite with his wife, uh, has a bad uh, ethics. One of the bad effects is in the grave is to have that. And uh, we'll see a story of Sa'ad, a time of the Prophet about this point, you know. Uh, the fourth thing is ghibah and namima, backbiting, and then carrying the bad uh, news from one to another in order to make enmity between the people. We come to this one and say, Mr. So and so said such thing about you, and we come to this one and say, Mr. So and so said such thing about you. So we carry news from one to another. The effect of backbiting and of namima. In the grave is uh, to increase the pressure of the grave. The fifth thing, if somebody is not believer of Ahlul Bayt Salamullah alayhim and not accepting wilayat of Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam and Ahlul Bayt Salamullah alayhim, because one of the things which will help us in the grave is wilayat Ahlul Bayt Salamullah alayhim, to believe in the imamate and khilafat of. Amir al mumini alayhi salam and the rest of the Imams after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So that's benefit is to be protected from the pressure of the grave. We mentioned the hadith of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah wa man mata ala hubbi ala Muhammad mata shahida. One of them is Bashara wa malak al mot bil jannah thumma munkar wa nakir. He will be given a good, the, the one who dies while loving Muhammad and Ali Muhammad or the, loving the household of the Prophet Muhammad, then the angel of death will give him a good tiding that you will go to a paradise and then the two angels, Munkar and Nakir, will tell him that. So he'll be saved from the pressure of the grave. You know, Six one, if we are not supporting the um, the weak people or the people whom injustice was uh, done to them. Certain um, people uh, are attacked by others and they um, they are oppressed. And if we have the power to support them and to remove injustice from them, naturally it is our duty to do that. If not, then in the grave we will be pressurized because of that. Say, why you did not support your uh, fellow brother who was um, in need of you and injustice was done to him and you could save him, you could help him, you did not care to be uh, in his rescue. The seventh one is to pray without wudu. If some people are uh, lazy to perform wudu and uh, a pray at some time, maybe a winter, maybe um, they are tired for whatever reason. They say, okay, quite okay, I pray without wudu. No, it has very, very bad effect. Of course, the prayer is not accepted. And then there is a pressure in the grave. You know? Actually, without wudu, uh, meaning that no uh, uh, wudu, and if the wudu is incorrect, as if it is no wudu. So if the one uh, perform his wudu uh, not similar to what Ahlul Bayt said, not in the right way. Naturally, his wudu is batil, so he's praying without wudu. So those who do not follow the sex of Ahlul Bayt, salamullah alayhim, and um, uh, they perform wudu in a wrong way, um, probably have the same thing, uh, punishment in the grave and the uh, pressure of the grave. Because their wudu is bottle, all their prayer is bottle all their life. You know, it is important to um, know the right way of wudu, as Ahlul Bayt Salamullah Alayhim explained it. You know. In uh, the book Jama'u Sadat, it said that if the mother is not satisfied with the, the person, then the person will have difficulty at time of death and difficulty in the grave. Um, there is a hadith. 
mentioned in from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam in the book Al Shara'i. It said a man of good deeds. So he is a man of good deeds, not a bad deeds. A man of good deeds were um, forced to sit in the grave and they told him that uh, we are beating you with a hundred lashes um, from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, he said, well, I cannot tolerate hundred lashes. That is too much. They continued resisting it uh, maybe say 90, 80, 110, 5, 4, 3, until one lash. Um, he said, um, well, I cannot tolerate. They said, no, there, there must be this one. It is a must. He, he said, okay, why you are um, uh, beating me? For what? They said, we are uh, flogging you because you prayed one day without ablution. And you passed by a weak one, and you did not help him. So there are two problems. One, one day only in his life he, he prayed without uh, wudu, without ablution. And this is the result. And the second one he passed by somebody weak, and people uh, were doing injustice to him. Uh, and he could support him. No problem. He's not fearing anything. But he did not care. He said, I don't care. And naturally, that has this bad effect in the grave. So it is said they flogged him with a flogging of the punishment of Allah. May God be glorified and exalted. And after that flogging, his grave was filled with fire. So he was a good man, we could say from al Akhyar, but still, one sin has that bad effect. Now, we come to the story of Sa'ad ibn Ma'ad. Sa'ad ibn Ma'ad was one of the good companions of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when he died, they told the Prophet, they told him Sa'ad died. The Holy Prophet asked him to uh, do the, his, if he attended his funeral. And sometimes he used to take the right side of the um, uh, janazah and sometimes on the left side. Um, uh, and then uh, he, the Holy Prophet uh, did not have uh, his full uh, address because that is for those who have some tragedy in the family they are not with that full address and he was barefooted when he used to walk uh, in the uh, janazah of Sa'ad you know. uh, so uh, till he came to the grave and then he made the grave with his on hand, you know, so much respect for this one because he was one of the very good companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then after coming out from his grave, his mother was very much satisfied that uh, her son, you know, the Prophet used to come in his funeral and carry his body and his holy Prophet uh, is a pair footed and showing that uh, he is um, uh, uh, sympathized with him and he um, feel uh, um, unsatisfied about his death and all, all of that respect was not easy. So she said uh, uh, to him, Hani al, uh, Ya Sa'ad, Hani al lak al Jannah. Oh Sa'ad, uh, may the paradise be very good for you. Means you are going to paradise naturally in this situation. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya Umma Sa'ad, O Mother of Sa'ad, ma, be careful, la tajzimi ala Allah, fa inna Sa'adan qad asabatuhu dhamma. Don't uh, make a decree on the Allah's uh, orders. Sa'ad now is facing a pressure. Uh, so they asked the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam later on, Ya Rasulullah, you did certain things which are astonishing. Uh, why you were following uh, the janazah, I mean, in uh, with the, passing with the people without sure barefooted? The Holy Prophet said, because I saw the angels like that. So I am doing similar to the angels. He said, sometimes you used to take the right side of the coffin, sometimes left side. He said, my hand was in hand of the angel, uh, Gabriel, Jabrail, and he used to 
shift from right to left and, and so on, you know. Uh, and they say then uh, you um, uh, order to uh, do ceremonial bath for him and to bury him and then, then you said he is suffering a pressure. What is that? He said, نعم إنه كان في خلقه مع آلي سوء he had uh, in, in his manners with his wife he, he was sometimes you know not a good manner you know, you know a bad way so in spite of being a good man a religious man in high position but still effect of that will be reflected on the grave uh, like this you know so uh, that is the thing um, uh, we see in the story of Ruqayya um, uh, stepdaughter of the Prophet actually not even a stepdaughter she is not daughter of Khadija she is daughter of uh, sister of Khadija she is a, a niece of Khadija uh, so uh, Khadija has a sister called Hala Hala married someone and then um, he had she had the children from him and then he died and then she married another one and he died and then she came um, her sister Khadija Ummul uh, Mu'mineen Khadija uh, she had money and wealth and um, she was supporting her so the, her daughters of Hala uh, sister of Khadija were brought up in house of the Prophet so they are called daughters of the Prophet otherwise the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has only one daughter and that is Fatima to Zahra, salamullahi alayha. However, um, this was naturally loved by the Prophet like a daughter, and um, she married to Uthman. And well, it is said in this hadith um, um, because mistreatment of Uthman were her that caused her to die, um, according to Kulini in Al Kafi, mentioned that. So the Holy Prophet stood in the grave and raised his head to the sky and um, his eye was uh, tearing and he said I remembered her and I remembered what she suffered so I felt sympathy about her and I asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect her to save her from the pressure of the grave uh, then he said Allahumma habli ruqayya min dhammat al-qabr فوهبها الله له. He said, Oh Allah, grant me this favor to save رقية from the pressure of the grave. And then Allah subhanahu wa taala uh, accepted his prayer. So what I mean, the um, pressure of the grave is uh, for everybody unless there are certain good deeds prevent from that. You know. Uh, well, mistreatment of Uthman to both the daughters uh, who married yani stepdaughters of the Prophet is not astonishing because in the book Taqrib uh, Abu Salah about Tariq al thaqafi he said when Uthman delivered his sermon and he said am I not marrying two daughters of the uh, Prophet Aisha told him yes you married two daughters of the Prophet but something was from you what you know about it so she did not declare what was, but probably uh, there was some mistreatment uh, in that way. However, that is historical thing, you know. Uh, now the question, if somebody is uh, hanged, will he feel the pressure of the uh, grave? The hadith said, yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will order the uh, air, the wind to pressurize him. And they say sometimes that pressure is more than pressure of the a grave on the ground, you know. Um, well, Allah is the creator of the air and is the creator of the um, uh, clay, so everything is created by Allah and by order of Allah. What saves us from the punishment in the grave? There are many good deeds, good, good things save us. The first one is ziyarat of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. It has great, great benefits. Uh, and we uh, know about the hadith from uh, Imam al-Baqar alayhi salam 
if the people would have known what benefits are for Ziyarat Imam Hussein, they would, would have died from the love of Ziyarat. And then he mentioned many things, but one of them he said, In his grave, it is opened um, as much as his vision can see. وَيُؤْمِنُهُ اللَّهُ مِنْ ضَغْطَةِ الْقَبْرِ And Allah will uh, protect him from the pressure of the grave. وَمِنْ مُنْكَرٍ وَنَكِيرٍ أَنْ يُرَوِّعَانَهُ أو يُرَوِّعَاهُ And Allah will protect him from munkar and nakir to uh, uh, be harsh to him in order not to fear from them. So he is immune from all that. You know. The second thing is if the mu'min dies in the day of of Friday, um, because Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said, "Man mata yom al Jumaa katab Allahu baraa min dhaqtat al Qabr." Whoever dies in the day of Friday, Allah will protect him from the pressure of the grave. That is for the blessing of this day. Uh, the beginning of Hadith uh, here said that the believer pray to Allah subhanahu wa taala for his needs. Allah delay. The response to his prayer till Friday, and in the Friday, uh, Allah will respond to him and will fulfill his need for the blessing of this day. You know, uh, the third is whoever dies between midday of Thursday till midday of the Friday, uh, again, is mentioned that he will be uh, protected from the pressure of the grave. The fourth thing, whoever recites Surah An-Nisa uh, in the day of Jum'ah, as Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam said, man qara'a Surah An-Nisa fi kulli Jum'ah, u'mina min dhaqtat al-Qabr. Whoever recites Surah An-Nisa every Friday will be protected from the pressure of the grave. And the fifth one is to go for Hajj four times. And it is said that, the Hajj will be in shape of a body, of a person, and he will pray for him in the grave, will be with him, and pray for him, and the thawab of that prayer will be for the deceased till the uh, um, uh, day of resurrection. You know. Uh, and the sixth thing is reciting Surah Al-Zukhruf, uh, it had that thawab. Seventh thing is praying for rak'ats in the Friday, uh, and in that, every rak'ah he writes Surah Al-Fatiha, and then Surah Tabarak, and then Hamim as sujda um, in every rak'at, so four rak'at. Uh, in that, um, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect him from the pressure of the grave and the difficulties in the day of judgment, you know. Um, this prayer is prayed um, in the morning of the Friday, means between sun rise and the midday. Uh, reciting uh, this dua uh, every day um, ten times, uh, there is a great uh, uh, thawab for it, uh, and dua start with, أَعْدَدْتُ لِكُلِّ هَوْلٍ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَلِكُلِّ هَمَّنْ وَغَمِّنْ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ وَلِكُلِّ نَعْمَةً الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهُ uh, Till end of the dua, this ten times if recited every day, then one is protected from the pressure of the grave and other difficulties in the um, after the grave in the day of judgment. To recite Surah Noon, Noon wal Qalami wa Ma Yastarun in the um, obligatory prayer or in Nafila, uh, and to recite four rak'ats in the um, uh, sixth night, I mean fifth uh, night, uh, fifth day evening, night of the 6th of Sha'ban, uh, you know, that mentioned, uh, it has that benefit. There are some other uh, a'mal, and it is mentioned uh, uh, that uh, Jesus, uh, son of Mary, alayhi uh, wa ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salam, he passed by a grave, and the person in the grave was um, punished, you know. And then next year he came and he found him. Um, he is satisfied and all right and he's very good. Then he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
uh, that I passed last year and he used to be punished now this year is all right. What happened to him? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, uh, Ya Ruh Allah, all the spirit of Allah. Um, he had a son who was a good son and that son um, did um, uh, repair a road for the people to pass, for the Muslims to pass and supported an orphan. So Almighty Allah said, I uh, for given his father for what his son has happened. So what we do what the children will do for their parents naturally will benefit them and we remove that person. You know. um, because we know in hadith uh, mentioned uh, verses of the hadith whoever do a good deeds so he will get the reward of that and reward of other people who learn to do the same good and whoever do a bad thing wrong thing so he will have the uh, punishment for that bad he did and if others do the same bad things they will be punished as well because of that you know uh, Amir al-Mun salam said whoever support man qawwa miskinan fi dine Whoever support as somebody weak in his faith and he don't know the argument and discussion in order to be uh, victorious on someone who hate Ahlul Bayt and his enemy, but he, ha he is strong in argument. He came to this poor mu'min and he had arguments and create doubt in mind of the mu'min and the mu'min cannot answer him, cannot defend himself. So if somebody come and support him and uh, defeat the Nasibi, so that person have so much thawab. He say, لَقَّنَهُ اللَّهِ يَوْمَ يُدْلَى فِي قَبْرِ Allah will let him say shahada when he come in his grave to say, Allah Rabbi and Muhammad Nabiyyi, Aliyun Waliyyi, Al-Ka'ba Qiblati, Al-Quran Bajati, Wa'uddati, Al-Mu'minun Ikhwani, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said you have said your hujjah whatever you have to say and it is now for you the highest positions in paradise and then his grave will change into a garden of paradise you know uh, so these are uh, the important things uh, what benefit the grave the the disease in the grave as we said uh, in the hadith um, that for the mu'min there are three things will benefit him uh, either sadaq jariya we do some good charity everlasting charity build a mosque and as long as that mosque is there the reward will be for him even if he is deceased uh, or ilmun uh, nas in knowledge uh, he leave for people knowledge in shape of a book or he publish a book or write a book or teach students and the student teach others and others teach others and so on so till day of judgment thawab of those teachings the student and then grand student and grand grand student and so on all of them you know the thawab will go for that person uh, and will benefit him in his grave and the third thing if he has a, a good son who will ask Allah to forgive him so the prayer for the deceased is very important and the people, we have to remember our deceased always and to pray for them. And if you do anything good, uh, according to hadith from the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said it will come like a treasure, um, a great gift uh, to the deceased. You know, if somebody say, say pray to rak'at or do any thawab or recite the Holy Quran for the thawab of the, or pay charity to the poor, uh, or help an orphan, or uh, do any good thing. That thawab is taken by the angels in a plate of light that is light will cover all the seven heavens and will stand on his grave. And he said, Oh people, this is the gift of your uh, uh, family to you. So the person will come and is happy, will enjoy in the grave and take it and then will affect him that his grave will be 
bigger, his position is better. And in some other hadith said he will be proud among others that uh, I have some people who remember me and send me always uh, this uh, thawab, this reward, you know. Uh, and the people who uh, really do not get from uh, their family any uh, reward, any thawab, any good deed, uh, will feel uh, ashamed, humiliated that we are alone, nobody remember us. Uh, everybody is remembered except me because my relatives are not remembering me in any charity, you see. Uh, he will feel about it. And also Imam Sadiq was asked, should we pray for the deceased? He said, yes, he might be in a tight situation and Allah will um, give him relief from that tightness uh, and he will be uh, told that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it easy for you because of the prayer of so and so your brother, so and so he prayed for you. Then the person asked that, can I um, uh, have a prayer and I have intention, it's reward for two people. Imam said, yes, you can make for two. Actually, you can share as many as you like. And it is mentioned in a hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not divide the reward. If you say this thawab is for a uh, hundred person, Allah will not divide it, will give everyone one percent. No. Allah will give all of them 100%. Because Allah is generous. So if you say this is for all mu'mineen and mu'minat, all the believers, then Allah will reward all the believers equally. He will not divide your thawab. So don't say, okay, I give $10 charity. Uh, this is if divided, will be small. No, Allah will not divide. That $10 will be given to everyone in your intention. Even if all the believers, millions and billions of believers, you say for them, then Allah will give them and then they will naturally pray for you in their grave that you remember them. So uh, this is uh, like like that. You know. um, well, um, how is affect our deeds? Uh, you know, there are two stories important to mention them. Um, Shaykh al-Baha'i mentioned that he went in one day uh, near to the one of the ulama who was very pious and he used to uh, live in the graves uh, to remember the deceased always and that person told him that today I have seen something very strange somebody was buried near me in the grave and then um, after the people left I uh, felt a smell uh, not similar to a fragrance uh, of this world I came out, I saw a very beautiful a young man there and he came and then he, when he stand on the grave, he uh, uh, went to the grave suddenly and I was astonished, who is this man and how he entered the grave uh, like that. And then after a while, I felt a very bad smell, I looked uh, there is a very harsh uh, feeding dog coming with bad smell and he came to the grave and he entered the grave. Uh, while I was looking, what is this? Suddenly I saw that young uh, boy with very nice dress and nice smell came out, his dress was torn uh, and he was injured. Then I ran behind him and asked him, who are you and what happened? He said, I am the good deed of this person. I was supposed to be with him and um, let him enjoy in the grave, not to be lonely. But now the dog you, you saw is his bad deeds. And because his bad deeds were more, so the dog actually was biting me. And um, as you see, he injured me. Then I was forced to run away. So now his bad deed will be with him in the grave will be punished, you know. Uh, of course, that person uh, had that uh, high spirit in order to be able to communicate with uh, these pictures in Barzakh. Otherwise, these pictures are not in dunya, in material way, no. It is in the Barzakh, and then he had uh, that high uh, spirituality to be able to uh, feel that, you know. Uh, 
so that is uh, the thing. Also, there is hadith uh, from the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam uh, told to uh, Qais ibn Asim uh, from Bani Tamim uh, and he, he said that um, remember O Qais that there will be a partner with you he will be buried with you he is alive and you are dead uh, and if that one is an honorable then he will honor you and if he was bad laim, uh, then he will leave you uh, and no one Will, will be with you and, le- and accept this one also in the day of resurrection and day of judgment he will be with you and you will not be questioned except about him so don't make him accept a good and because if he is good you will enjoy to be with him if, if he is bad then you will suffer uh, from him and that is your deed وَهُوَ فِعْلُك so the one is with you is your deeds. Your deeds will be shaped in that shape, shape good or bad. So if your deeds in this world are good, will be shaped good in the hereafter. If God forbid bad, will be shaped bad and you will suffer more. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from bad deeds and forgive us our sins. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammad wa alihi tahirin. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعجل فرجهم